Today, we take a look at what happens when two masters of American art and iconic venues collide in the Valley of the Sun. Desert Botanical Garden brings back world-renowned glass artist Dale Chihuly, whose work over the last half century has pushed the boundaries of art. His works have brought in over a million people in his last two exhibitions to the garden, but this time, the garden will co-present with Frank Lloyd Wright's Taliesin West for an intimate exhibit and guided tour experience. It's a deeper dive into Chihuly's stunning work amidst the historic landmark, which was Frank Lloyd Wright's winter home. Two venues rich with history, now painted brightly by Chihuly in the desert. Artwork known across the globe for its unique designs, color, and scale, made of multiple smaller pieces combined to make larger than life-size formations, all out of blown glass. It's almost trickery for the eye because the mind wonders, how could something so delicate, so fragile, be so massive and blend so organically with the elements of nature in the Sonoran Desert? World-renowned artist Dale Chihuly makes a dramatic return to the Valley of the Sun with a stunning new exhibition, Chihuly in the Desert. It's the Sonoran Desert at its most beautiful, and it's the Sonoran Desert at its most inspirational because you get to see the works of people who actually love the desert, Chihuly loves the desert, we know that Frank Lloyd Wright loved the desert. He calls this his desert laboratory. It was his winter home. And both of those inspirations are coming to life in the form of the Chihuly artwork, but also in the form of this beautiful mid-century architecture that is now more important and relevant than ever. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes! Whoa! Man, these things are big. <laughs> All right! Artist Dale Chihuly has been pushing the limits of fragility, creating beautiful hand-blown shapes popping with color and vibrancy. Glass heated, spun, blown, and formed into shapes most couldn't imagine Whoa. would be possible. It's his trademark, walking a tightrope of artistic tension. It's so unique, and when you think about the process, how did someone start with just, I imagine it's a little blob of glass that gets spun and blown and the color is added. It's just fascinating to imagine how you go from not having those forms to turning it into, turning the glass into something so extraordinary. Giant chandeliers, suspended shapes, exhibits both inside and out. Chihuly's artwork is in more than 200 museums across the globe. Traditional glass factory production is about symmetry and perfection, but the defining idea behind Dale's work is asymmetry and irregularity, and all of it starts at his studio in Seattle. Oh, look at that. Now watch this beauty. Nice one. Beautiful. At 80 years old, a remarkable talent to continue the creative process after all of these decades. Well, I think what motivates me mostly is the glass itself. There are so many possibilities with the material and I love to experiment and I'm, you know, always looking for new ideas. Chihuly's art for this exhibition is immersive, set against majestic saguaros, landmark buildings, and striking Papaco Buttes. Large-scale installations nestled into the garden's world-class collection of some 50,000 desert plants, some of which have been at the garden since 1939, when the Cardone cactus, collected by the first executive director, was planted at just four feet tall. 
The old now intertwined with the new through Dale's light and color glass masterpieces. I love the idea that people of all ages can experience the artwork in this incredible setting. I love it that they're able to see the artwork in, an, in beautiful nature and that they can learn more about nature and learn more about the glass at the same time and that they can have a shared experience of awe and joy as they discover new things. New things that offer a generational appeal, a time to connect, and a time to enjoy outdoor art. For me, I love involving my children and my grandchildren at the garden. And whenever I see them, uh, seeing their reaction on their faces to what they see in the garden, it's kind of magical in a way. Installations peppered through the garden's trails and punctuated by a breathtaking indoor gallery, Endurance Hall. This first time for a Chihuly Gallery opening of an indoor exhibition has created possibilities to showcase different works, many of which have never been on display in Arizona before. These art forms more delicate and a different dimension. When you're inside, it's, it's almost like going into church where people lower their voice and they, they feel like they're in some place special. And it's just, it's a very cool mood that's created and um, it sort of punctuates the experience going from the out, uh, outdoors, outside installations, inside, and then seeing those more delicate things that couldn't survive, say, the harsh weather outside. Things like Chihuly's paintings and drawings alongside the remarkable blown glass. But even for those who have seen the previous two exhibits in 2008 and 2013, this installation will once again stun the senses. Behind you are, uh, is a series of work that Dale was just embarking on when we were here in 2013. So as the work continues to, to evolve, we're able to, to show new things. Seeing Chihuly's work here is so much more special than, say, seeing it at the Bellagio in Las Vegas because here it's the way that you can see how our nature and our gardens really inspired him and the way that it's installed here so that it meshes beautifully with, with nature. It makes a great statement about how art, beauty, and nature can all combine and it makes it just very special because it's made for us here, for our gardens. When the sun sets, the exhibit is reborn with lights illuminating the glass, which has been strategically placed within the landscape. The colors of the blown glass vibrant against the contrast of the night sky. Spectacular illumination that taunts the senses. So as the sun is setting, the sun rays are coming in almost at a, a lateral angle. It, it flows through the glass, lights it up even more from inside. And then as the sun goes down, the artificial light comes on. They're dramatically placed. So you get to see this transition, of the same object, but in different um, light conditions. Um, and it, it, it's the same, but it, it's transformed. It's almost as though it's alive. The path to exhibitions like this and others began back in 2008, when the garden's art exhibitions became a vibrant and compelling point of pride in the Valley's cultural scene. That's the year when Dale Chihuly's glass sculptures first drew more than 500,000 visitors. Then a return exhibition five years later attracted an unprecedented 631,000 guests. That's thousands of guests and more importantly, significant economic impact to benefit our local economy. Now, with a couple of years of stalled tourism dollars in Arizona due to COVID, this installation comes at a critical time. 
We're anticipating that because this is in our high season too, many people who are gonna be traveling here specifically for the Chihuly and the desert experience will be coming, but also we think a lot of people that are here for some of the winter and spring events that we host in Scottsdale will also find themselves with, oh my gosh, look what's here, look at something else that I can do. So this will be a huge economic boom for us. The beauty of these pieces may be familiar to some who have followed the work of Dale Chihuly here or at the dozens of other exhibitions around the world. But for many others, their first view has been in the palm of their hand. The impact of social media on Chihuly's exhibitions has been another tool for record numbers of visitors. And with an estimated four and a half billion people across the globe with social media accounts, its reach is limitless. We are so excited. Social media is such a powerhouse. Um, video is king right now, of course. So having Chihuly in the desert at the Desert Botanical Garden and sharing Popco Park with both Phoenix and Scottsdale allows a lot of cross collaboration. This marketing tool is part of the garden's five year strategic plan to not only expose people to the arts, but actually engage with them. Broader audiences, diverse groups of people, hashtags, selfies, and online conversations. The garden's social media platforms have more than 261,000 followers across Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and most recently, TikTok. And Taliesin West with some 310,000 followers. We're excited that Chihuly in the Desert is at Desert Botanical Garden through June. That is an amazing amount of time. Plus, the Desert Botanical Garden also hosts multiple smaller events that are limited times, one day only, and that helps with the spike of social media coming through. We're gonna be able to promote Chihuly in the Desert multiple times throughout the year to drive that engagement, drive traffic, and because it is a multifaceted piece of work throughout the entire garden, there's gonna be something to show new each time, whether it's golden hour, daytime, various pieces. Countless visitors have taken selfies and photos of their visits to Chihuly in the desert, and in doing so, nature and the digital world have collided, and also the message of conservation and preservation of cactus. One of the things I see people using their technology for is when they, they're walking around the garden and they find that wow place, that plant that they never thought that they would see. They were just coming because they thought, well, the garden has pretty plants and it's an exciting place to be in that regard. But they find that really special place and they want to take a, a picture of themselves. They want that selfie to memorialize where they are, to remember what a special moment that was and then share it with other people. In 2015, the garden presented its first evening-only exhibition, artist Bruce Monroe's immersive large-scale installations, Sonoran Light, attracted 318,000 visitors and had a significant economic impact while reinvigorating the community's support of the arts and significantly boosting the local economy. Then, in 2019, the garden presented Electric Desert, a light and sound experience by Clip Collective, where cactus and desert became a living canvas in an immersive journey through the garden using light and original music. Wild Rising by Cracking Art stunned garden goers with the installation of more than a thousand animal sculptures made from colorful, recyclable plastic, delivering messages about environmental issues, including climate change, use of plastic, and endangered species. The vibrant art forms were the creations of Cracking Art, a collective of artists based in Milan who specialize in plastic as an artistic medium. But who would have known then that all of these would be paving the way for a collaboration between the Desert Botanical Garden and Taliesin West. The return of Dale Chihuly to the Sonoran Desert, but this time, one exhibition and two locations. It's a really wonderful pairing between Taliesin West and the Desert Botanical Garden because the experience of the sculptures is completely different. At Desert Botanical Garden, it's a big, beautiful, wide open space where you can discover things around curving pathways that are beautifully landscaped. Here at Taliesin West, it's probably a more intimate experience with a small group on a tour or with just you and your small group in a self-guided way in the evenings. 
This is probably more about the connection between Wright and Chihuly, whereas the Desert Botanical Garden is celebrating the connection between Chihuly and nature. This paired artistry, a perfect combination, but marking the first ever exhibition for Taliesin West. Discussions with Chihuly Studios about this exhibition started back in 2017, and with several years of creative effort, this unique vision, integrating art, architecture, and nature came together to form this collaboration. We thought that couldn't be a better partnership, and really for a few different reasons. First, to show this connection to our audiences, this connection with art, with nature, art inspired by nature, architecture inspired by nature. You know, that's really doing the work that the foundation sets out to do and doing the work that the garden sets out to do. In a new light, at Taliesin West, the walking tour invites guests on a journey through the ideas of two masters, Wright, the most celebrated architect of the 20th century, and Dale Chihuly, a master of art. It's also a journey into the lives of Wright, Chihuly, and the people who share their stories. In a New Light includes visiting iconic Taliesin West spaces, the Prow, the Garden Room, the Kiva, and the Drafting Studio, and connecting each of them with Wright's signature practice of organic architecture. Along the way, guests will also explore six stunning artworks by Dale Chihuly, including delicate Ninjima floats in a fountain and a towering marine blue and citron tower in the garden squares. For Dale Chihuly, this was a long time dream to have his work at one of Frank Lloyd Wright's locations. Oh yeah, it's a dream come true. I mean, Taliesin West is such an incredible complex and it's a, really a great honor to be able to make six installations. Dale Chihuly had long been aware of Wright's journey to the desert, which started back in 1927 when he was invited to consult on the Arizona Biltmore with another architect. Wright became captivated by the desert's rugged beauty and Chihuly equally captivated by the architect's work and early beginning at Taliesin West. Wright saw the inspiration in the site that Taliesin West exists on today, except there were no roads, no buildings, no electricity, or reliable water sources at the surface. His vision required him to enlist the support of his apprentices at his home in Wisconsin and invite them to bring shovels, rakes, hoes, drawing boards, concrete, mixers, and more to construct the soon-to-be winter home in Arizona. Wright lived on the site with the apprentices, who stayed in sheep herder tents at this winter camp, designing Taliesin West for the architect's family family and his Taliesin Fellowship. Under the direction of the architect, the apprentices began erecting walls using stones pulled from the desert and a dry concrete mixture made of Portland cement and sand culled from the site's dry washes in what came to be known as desert masonry. Eventually, Taliesin West grew from tents, a studio, and a kitchen to include performance spaces, guest quarters, and more. And the site would become a gathering place for artists and architects for decades. The blend of history with art is what sets apart Chihuly in the desert at Taliesin West. One of Chihuly's signature pieces, his chandeliers reimagined. Instead of hanging from a ceiling, they rise up from the ground toward the sky, which can be seen in the alabaster and amber spire towers that are part of the beginning of the Chihuly in the Desert tour at Taliesin West. First sculpture you see when you arrive at Taliesin West, and the reason I love it so much is that despite having seen sketches over a four-year period, Dale picked up on something, an element of the building, that I didn't realize he had seen, and that's these beautiful uh, shade panels that are in gold and white, and I had not connected that up. The golden spikes of the glass sculpture energize the space like the sun and echo the spiked cactus, jagged yucca plants, and prickly desert landscape into one structure. 
The golden celadon baskets are part of a series Chihuly began exploring in 1977. They reflect Chihuly's first encounter with Native American baskets, slumping together in stacked forms and reflective of the Native American turquoises of Arizona culture and heritage. There's a mastery of understanding proportion and movement in these baskets, which we can see in Wright's work throughout his technique of expanding and contracting open spaces to lead guests into the Taliesin West garden room where those baskets are installed. Two completely separate forms of artistic expression and mastery, both influenced by nature, community, and culture, showcased in the same space as Chihuly in the desert. For us in Scottsdale, this is a dream come true because we know that visitors are hungering really for the opportunity to be outside, to be in this solace that we have here, and to be inspired by art and by nature and this combination is perfect. So we know that we will be getting a lot of visitors from not just around the nation, but around the globe who will want to put this on their bucket list. Coming after the onset of COVID creates particularly unique timing and potential to generate significant economic impact for Arizona tourism. Desert Botanical Garden and the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation received a grant in excess of $1 million from the Office of the Governor and the Arizona Office of Tourism. This support helps the relaunch of arts and culture and community events statewide. We had the opportunity to create these Visit Arizona grants to help support tourism after the pandemic. And when this grant came across, it was just a no-brainer. When you combine Dale Chihuly's art with the nature of Desert Botanical Gardens and the beauty out here and the architecture at Taliesin West. I mean, you just have magic. In addition to the support from the Arizona Office of Tourism, we were fortunate enough to have the city of Scottsdale make a wonderful investment in promoting this and partnering with Experience Scottsdale. We're also able to take the message about this exhibition and the wonderful things that we have to offer here at Taliesin West and in Scottsdale throughout the country and around the world. The arts in the Valley and across the state went through some hard times with the pandemic. Well, I think what's unique about this is because it's made specifically for Arizona and there's gonna be only one place that you can see it, I think the opportunity to not only get to see the Chihuly exhibit, but to get to experience it here at Desert Botanical Garden and at Taliesin West is gonna be incredible. And I think once people realize that, it's not only going to bring people here but the people who are already here who realize that they get the opportunity to see it, I think we're gonna see millions of people come to see this exhibit and we're so excited for that. But with this major donation, Dale Chihuly's world-renowned work, and a new collaboration between the two Valley iconic locations, it just might be the mark of a new and promising chapter. This is an opportunity for both of us to bounce back. Um, to bring more tourism, more guests to Arizona, and then for those guests, once they're here, to bring them to the garden, to enjoy Chihuly, but also to see the garden and desert plants, in some cases for the first time. Um, so it's been a really good opportunity for us to take adversity and turn it into opportunity and accelerate, I think, the return to normal. And we're very grateful to the state for making that investment in this exhibit and in the garden. Whether at Desert Botanical Garden or Taliesin West, Chihuly's artwork is something not to be missed. A window of opportunity through June 19th to engage your senses with art in a way that can only be described as immersive and inspiring amidst the beauty of the Southwest Desert landscape.